take up um, studying at university filmmaking. Jane works for the Lock the, Lock the Gate Alliance as a community organiser for the southwest area. Uh, in 2014, Jane's organisation, sorry, Jane was the organisation's national media uh, coordinator, and in that role, uh, she started making short films about the struggle of, of the people of Queensland um, with the impact of the coal seam gas industry in that state. Jane wanted to tell the story of the WA battle against um, the gas industry, so she made a fractured state. It took eight months and saw her travel all over the Kimberley and all the way down to the southwest, meeting with impacted landholders and also uh, Indigenous people. <coughs> Jane's about to release a uh, second film, a half hour documentary called Accrued Injustice, which is about the 20, uh, 2009 uh, oil spill in the Montara uh, platform in the Timor Sea and its impact on the Timor people. So would you please welcome Jane Hammond. Thanks everyone. Um, yeah, we just thought I'd do a quick update on where we're at in WA. Um, since, uh, since the making of the film, it only came out last November, but well, as you all know, we've had a change of government. And um, things were looking that's about to go. things were looking pretty good, we thought. Um, they're not looking so good at the moment. Um, we've had a little bit of a backtrack um, and we're starting to worry. Um, so as mentioned in the film, we've, um, WA has 50 million hectares under license to oil and gas. A lot of that is it just on, on the uh, on the main, on, you know, onshore. A lot of that is unconventional gas. Um, and basically the difference is uh, the way you get the gas out of the ground. So it's all the same gas, but where is it and how is it trapped? As you saw in the uh, the diagram in the in the movie, um, conventional gas, you basically just stick the pipe down and up it comes. Unconventional gas, you have to do a lot more. And a lot more, and the things that you do, like fracking, are very concerning to, um, to Lock the Gate and to the landholders um, that, uh, that we work with. So we've got three areas of concern. We've got the Kimberley, which is, we've got quite a lot of um, lease areas. Uh, the Midwest, which is ground zero, where my colleague Simone in the yellow works. Um, and the Southwest, which is where I, um, the communities I work with are in the Southwest. Um, in 2004, there was fracking in the Witcher Range behind Margaret River. Now the gas in the southwest is quite hard to extract, so they tried fracking. It didn't work because of clay soils. Instead of the, the tiny holes opening up and letting the gas out, they constricted. So they thought, we'll send some diesel down the hole, see if that works, and it didn't. They put 1.2 million litres of diesel down the hole, and they only got oh, it's about uh, less than half back. So. Sitting in the Witcher Range in a priority one water catchment area for Margaret River and most of the southwest is uh, a contaminated site, uh, although it's not classified as such, that there's 600,000 litres of diesel oil um, down one of these wells. Uh, and no mention of how they intend getting it up. The company that um, actually did that, Amity, basically went broke after that. It was such a disaster. Um, but another company wants to come in and uh, get the gas out, but they're saying they won't frack. So what the government did, they, uh, what Labor did, they promised a no fracking ban in the southwest. And everyone went, great. What we understand that to mean is all the activities that go around fracking. So we thought the Witcher Range might be safe. Now the government's telling us, one, that only it only refers to what goes under the ground that goes boom, um, not all the activities that go around fracking, which are just as important, like the use of the waters, the truck movements, the, um, the, the well pads, the exploration. That's all still happening. Um, and now the government's saying, we don't even need legislation for these guys. Trust me, I'm the minister. We don't need to do anything. The policy's in place, which um, really is just not good enough. It's a she'll be right attitude, and it's just uh, really, really disappointing. 
Um, and then we had our Minister for Mines, who's supposed to be overseeing all this, who's supposed to be looking after our water. He's not really, he's looking after our mines because he's the Minister for Mines. And he's actually saying, gas industry, you've got it wrong. You've got to tell these people it's all okay. He is pro-fracking. His brother is not. His brother is a farmer and uh, supports Lock the Gate. And the Minister told, told the West Australian, this drives him crazy. He doesn't, he's not happy. Because um, we're winning the war with social media. And uh, the other Minister's a bit angry about that. Because uh, we're, you know, if, if only the gas industry could tell everybody how wonderful it was, there'd be no problem. So we're a little bit worried about that as well. Um, there's a lot of science coming out. It's a bit like science on climate change. A lot of reports, an overwhelming number, are saying that there are problems. There are health problems. There are water problems with this industry. And the number of reports are just uh, stacking up. They're growing exponentially. So we have the science, and the science is on our side. Now, the government has promised us a fracking inquiry, but they haven't come up with the terms of reference yet. So what we want people to do is to start to have an input into that, to make sure that this inquiry really is thorough, to make sure that we get these scientific reports before that committee. We get the world's best experts out here to WA to tell the committee, the, inquir the inquiry that we've been promised, um, that this isn't a good thing, that this has <coughs> caused all these problems. Um, so that's sort of what we're hoping. Um, in the southwest where I'm working, recently we had a major gas find. This is the Harvey area. Um, they're saying that this gas is very similar to the Witcher Range gas. So it's unconventional gas and it's very hard to get out of the ground. Now, what we also have in Harvey is Harvey beef, Harvey fresh, lots mm -hmm. of great food growing areas. So we're starting to see a little bit of a battle. Um, and those people will need help. Um, we had an interesting thing happened with the lease down here. Uh, this, this Harvey lease used to go all the way out here and down and meet up with Bunbury. But uh, the people of Brunswick declared themselves gas fuel free. So they were in the lease. Uh, they declared themselves gas fuel free, but just before they did that, the gas companies took them out of the lease. They shrunk the lease back up so, because these people said, you don't have a social licence to be here. The company thought, well, we've got enough gas in the top, we're out of there. So, uh, that's, that was a major win, and we're counting that as a win. Although the gas company said, oh, there was probably not much gas down there. But this is the sort of power that communities can have. And this is what Lock the Gate does. We empower communities to take this action and to try to um, give the community back the right to say no, give the community back the right to decide their fate and protect their water. Um, so in Brunswick, they're still celebrating and they're doing amazing things with helping other uh, communities. We are hoping tomorrow to have a meeting in Fremantle to start to get some metro action together. We're meeting at the Trade Winds at 6.30 if anyone's interested. We're going to get a metro group together and we're going to start linking country and city um, to uh, give the people of Harvey, the Southwest, and the Midwest, and eventually the Kimberley, um, a chance to fight this thing because they need you guys. Uh, we've been quietly working in the regions, and the regions have taken back their social license in a lot of places, but they still need, we need a push in the city to get the best inquiry we can and to get um, the politicians starting to listen. So they're not going to whitewash this, and they're trying to, even though they promised. Um, so, um, yeah, here's the community of Harvey just starting to get organised. Um, it's a quick uh, reminder of what a gas field looks like. Um, once they start, they say, oh, look, we'll only have a couple of gas wells. But every time they put one down, they sort of need another one because they've, they've invested so heavily that the gas runs out pretty quick. So we'll just put one next door and another one and another one and eventually you have this. Mm -hmm. This is what we call industrialisation of the landscape and this is what we're very concerned about because it makes it really hard to farm. Is um, that in the US? This is in the US, yeah. So it's pretty bad in, in places. Um, I think this one's Texas. Yeah. Um, this is oil and gas. So, so they do this with oil as well. They frack some of the oil in the US. Um, so we don't want this situation here. <coughs> 
and one of the reasons I um, am very involved in Lock the Gate is because um, I see this as a human rights issue. It's much more than environmental or a water issue. Um, and one of the, um, as mentioned earlier, in 2014 I went to Queensland and I started recording these stories about what was happening in, in the Queensland gas fields. And among the people I met was George Bender. Now, a year, a year after I interviewed him, he took his own life. Now, that happened after 11 years, or more than a decade, of fighting the gas industry um, and having no rights. He had a farm, uh, a big cotton farm that his family had had for generations, and the gas companies wanted to plonk all these wells. Now, his automated machines would not be able to navigate uh, the paddocks as they had before. Every time they came in, they'd have to be reprogrammed. So his farm was going to suffer so much from that, apart from the fact that he didn't like what was happening to the water, he didn't like what was happening to his neighbours. Um, so that, that is an example of the tragic situation and the pressure that people are under. So this is everybody's issue. This is the people that make our food um, are really, you know, they're, they're uh, uh, under a lot of pressure. So we're hoping that um, today, before you go, you can all sign our petition. Um, to essentially keep Labor honest. Let's, let's force them to stick to what they promised, which were fracking bans in the southwest Metro and Peel. Uh, but we want more than just fracking under the ground bans. We want the whole fracking activity banned, including expiration. And we want a moratorium that they've promised. We want that brought in. A moratorium on fracking and unconventional gas statewide. And we want a really comprehensive and thorough inquiry that also looks at the impact on climate change of some of the emissions. So if they do this properly, we don't think that we will have a gas industry here. But we kind of a little bit dubious that we can really trust them to do it properly. But if we mobilise people enough to put in submissions, to keep your politicians honest, we will win this. Um, and it will be the benefit for for all of us. They're not honest to start with, so it's hard to keep them honest, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so this is one, one thing you can do is follow the campaign. We're Frack Free WA. Um, but there's about 14,000 people who like this page. It's a very active page. We don't buy any likes. This is all people who have actually liked us because they want to get involved in this campaign. So if you can jump on that and keep an eye on what's happening, even if you hate Facebook, just keep an eye on um, uh, the campaign and there'll be actions, there'll be lots of things you can do. Um, and that's us, Lock the Gate, that's me, um, uh, and a contact number if you want to take a photo of that and contact me at any stage um, or log into our um, website um, or if you're interested more in the Midwest then Simone down there will also give you her number. Yep. Um, so yeah, um, and that's me. So, would anyone like to ask any questions? Uh, I come from Italy, and so I don't know the legislation here in Australia, but uh, we have a chance in Italy with the five, 500,000 uh, uh, signatures okay. to propose a referendum for this kind of stuff. Right. How does it work here in Australia? Well, with yeah, referendum, I think that would... Yeah, we, we have bans. We, we haven't gone the referendum way. In, in Australia, they don't... It seems like such a huge thing to get a referendum mm -hmm. happening. But perhaps that's something that we could push for. Um, but we do have... If we... Well, the strategy we're using at the moment is to lock down small communities and get enough of those to put enough pressure. So we go into a community and they decide to have a survey. It's usually, um, as you saw in the film, I don't know if it, how clear it is, but it usually ends up in the high 90s percent of that population says, we want to go gas field free. And then that community takes away the gas miners' licence. In Victoria, we've got, we had 75 of those communities and we got a ban, like a ban on onshore gas. Um, unconventional gas, um, uh, and is it a moratorium or a ban so, um, a, uh, on it's fracking? It's a permanent ban on fracking and unconventional gas and a moratorium for another five or so or more years on all conventional gas as well. Yeah, so it yeah, just shows a that... A proper ban on unconventional and fracking. So Here we've got 16 of those communities, <coughs> and by the end of next year, 
um, Simone and I would hopefully have doubled that. Yeah. Without we just we just start the process rolling, and the communities do the work. But well, do you reckon that there is a solution? Because the, how, how much is the land basically that uh, is not owned by the communities or the people? Quite a lot, I guess. Um, but it takes. But they end up getting a lot through the politics of it all. They end up getting a ban. So yeah, but this is a prostitution now yeah. uh, because they come. Mm. Before we had the liberal, now we have a labor, and the meaning does <coughs> not change. Oh, yeah, that, well, it, we, it is a bit. They might, it might work. If we, we, be, we still believe in the political process, surprisingly. Good luck. Um, but, <laughs> but if, I mean, that's all Good we've luck. got. You know, uh, um, maybe the ref, uh, maybe a more, um, you know, a referendum might be something further down the track. But right now, we we have got, we can put pressure on these guys. We've already seen. We we did one story in the Echo, the Midland Echo about the bands and boom, suddenly we've got ministers wanting to meet with us mm -hmm. before we couldn't get in the door. So they, it's amazing what a little bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. So if all you guys wrote a letter or signed a petition, came to an action, um, spoke to your friends about it, you know, the word gets out and the pressure builds. That's right now that's sort of the best we've got. And and we've, yeah, so yeah. in Victoria it was a Labour government who put in the ban, but the Liberal government initially put in the moratorium. In Tasmania there's a moratorium by the Liberal government. In Northern, in New South Wales there's partly areas where the government's brought back the licences because of community pressure. So we know the community pressure and locking down the gas for free surveys works to put political pressure on and get bans in certain areas. Yeah, but it's been a lot more successful than other parts of the world, the way it's been done. I have the feeling that today to inform uh, all the communities and make them moving and give them pressure, is, it takes quite a while. Yeah, well, we, but we've, no, I mean, we've got 16, so 16 communities already yeah. and there's only two of us. So it's amazing. What we do is we have a night like this in, the, in a country hall, we pack it and then we get those people to start, they start their own action group, then we go off and talk to another lot of community. Meanwhile, they're working in their own community, doing it themselves. Um, and they, there's 600 conversations, like Brunswick, 900 conversations of knocking on doors, do you want to go gas fill free? And suddenly people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So that's how we win you, you know, sorry, you know how many door knocking I've done here in the in this mm. urban area for the gas fracking in the last couple of years? Mm. I lost counting. Yes. Yeah, no many signatures, sorry. No, in some, in some in, areas, in, we Yeah, stopping. we work they in the even, regions. They don't yeah. even... Open the door. That's, That's why we're really starting annoying. here. And I'm going yeah. with a t-shirt, no yeah, gas yeah. fracking. We're start, look, we're starting in the region, but now we're coming into the metro because we need you guys. So it's it's growing, growing. I, I have a child at Swan Valley Anglican School. We were at Guildford Battle last year. And I drive through the valley every day and I'm seeing more and more signs popping up every day. Mm. I'm seeing parents, four-wheel drives coming in with stickers on cars and more and more people declaring their property back free through the metro area, Cavisham, the Vines, all through West Swan yeah. Road. And we only started Swan. working there. And that's yeah. so recent, Exactly. The last well, months. Well, I started Less working than. there in October. Yeah. So, and I'm that, I'm, my region goes from the Swan Valley to yeah. Exmouth, and then I'm supporting all these different yeah. groups because it's local people on the ground. We're actually talking about it in seen. our parent help groups on Friday morning at school. Yeah, awesome. that's fantastic. You know, so it's so working. Yeah. Yeah. If we can all do that. Now, you had a question, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Before. Is that gas for export or domestic use? Yeah. Well, they're, they're exporting most of what we already have in WA from the Northwest Shelf. Yeah. So we've got a policy for um, reservation, 15%, which is, is good. But what the gov gas companies are now trying to do is say, We'll just export everything off the Northwest Shelf, and then we'll start because we can get a tax, bit of a tax dodge. We'll start pocking the landscape for the 15% domestic use. Okay, yeah. So they're just using a system and abusing a system. Okay. But what we say is, we have enough gas. We want to save our water. It's much more precious. We've got to drink. We've got to eat for <coughs> centuries to come, hopefully. Hmm. Um, so we don't want to waste it. With 30 years of a gas burn that's going to do God knows what to people's health, to the environment, etc, etc. Any other questions? Who are the companies involved? Like, who are the main players? There's quite a few. Down in the southwest is Cal Energy, which is Hathaway Berkshire, which is a huge US company. 
Um, then we've got Pilot Energy, um, and and a company called uh, which is in the Harvey area. Then a company called Bunbury Res Bunbury Energy, which used to be Unconventional Resources, which is Chinese owned and sort of hiding, but they they haven't finalised their lease. Then f uh, further north, we've got companies like Origin, uh, Transurf, um, AWE, all all the big players. Um, we haven't got Santos uh, at the moment, although they're sort of moving in at the top in the Kimberley and they're moving in the bite for oil. So we've got them coming into WA. Um, in the, most of the work in the Kimberley is being done by Buru Energy, which is a local company. And they've sold off some of their area to Mitsubishi now yeah. as well. Yeah, they're, par Mitsubishi. they're partnered with Mitsubishi. So we've got small companies and backed by massive companies. Alcoa also had interests. I think they might have divested most of theirs, or there's some in the Midwest. They've got yeah. some interest in the Midwest. So we've got, yeah, there's a big mix. Um, is that, is that uh, fracturing uh, done all, offshore as well? Uh, not not at the moment oh, in the in the get, uh, get wells underground, but Old oh, Barrow Island, yeah, <coughs> totally in the oil the oil industry. Frick, 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 frick. The oil, but not yeah. gas. Um, no, I don't think they're doing gas on Barrow. I'm not sure, but I know they have fracked there. They they've done fracking has changed. So the gas industry will tell you it's been it's been done safely for 50 years, <coughs> but it's changed dramatically in the last decade and even the last 20 years. So what we know of Modern fracking is a lot more risky, so they kind of play semantics with us when they say that. Yeah. Any other questions? Yep. Um, are these companies subject to um, environmental studies like everyone else that improves their property? They put through, yeah, they, of course they have to do environmental statements, but um, environmental, well, statements right there, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, like exactly, I mean, what do we call the EPA, the every project approved. So a lot of it, and, and sometimes they say, we don't even have to look at this, you know. I mean, I, the work that I've been doing on Montara, I know that's a different area, but Montara, the crude injustice that I've just done, the Montara oil field, uh, they had a massive spill there in 2009. And the company was, oh, me a culpa, we've done this terrible thing. Just last week, uh, they were knocked back for another well at the Montara field because they didn't meet the environmental standards. So we've got companies that say they do all this stuff, but they don't, you know, or they, they wriggle out of it in all sorts of ways. They just, if they can get away with it, they will. Um, and I think that's, that's not just the gas industry, that you know, seems to be environmental regulation. It's mining comes first in WA. But, um, just yeah. a question on Queensland, because it's been going on there. Um, was there any, did they take it to the High Court because a lot of people were getting sick and things like that? Um, they, because they didn't have baseline studies, they couldn't mm. prove. So they have had medical doctors say, look, there's something really wrong with this community. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, oh, you know, they're poor people and they probably smoke. You know, they, they, there's always a reason. So that's one of the reasons we want full baseline studies on our water and our people's health. So that when the kids go to the doctor, we know that they weren't they weren't asthmatic five years ago, you know. Um, but yeah, it's just it's been almost impossible to prove, um, and there's been you know counter studies and all sorts of things. But in the U.S., we are seeing, you know, especially with infant health, we're seeing increases in leukemia, we're seeing respiratory problems, we're seeing, um, you know, smaller birth weight babies, the usual gamut of things that you get with pollutants. So. Um, yeah. Are they baseline studies then applicable to Australia? I don't think they've even done them in the US. So we're... we're oh, that, there's not baseline statements on that stuff. Then. But, but this is what we're seeing. We're seeing increase, and, and we, cause we, cause it's so, this, it's so invasive and there's so many of it, we are seeing clusters. Mm -hmm. So they, there was a study recently, I think it was for every... Um, if you go five kilometres out away from a gas well, then the, you know, the graph goes down for the clusters of leukaemia. Um, so there are, there's a whole lot of, a raft of studies that are coming out and they're, they're built on statistical analysis rather than this long term, as far as I know, there hasn't been long term baseline studies, so nothing to compare it with. Mm. But you can compare it to a healthy population that's not near a well um, and you start to see the statistical evidence and, there, and there's a lot of stuff coming out of the US. Because you know it's 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 everywhere. Mm.
and more and more on like the, the proven like water contamination um, incidents, earthquakes proven to be a result of re-injecting well fluid and all that sort of stuff, isn't it? As yeah. Well? So I mean, we we're we're left having to prove that there's a problem. They're not proving to us that it's safe. Yeah. And they, they don't have the precautionary principle. They call something, they, they have this system called a LERP, which is really boils down to being the cheapest, you know, we'll spend so much money, but once that's passed, well, it's not economic and buggy, you know, we're just going ahead. Uh, whereas we'd write, rather say, let's take a precautionary principle on this. If, it's, if there is a doubt that we might risk our water, let's, you know, back off and let's just Let's save what counts. So, yeah. Just Jane, I've just changed over my gas company, and I made sure. Well, I asked them if it's because frac gas, mm -hmm. and they said no, it's not. But how would we know if frac gas and conventional gas comes online? I suppose it's only one pipe. Yeah. How would you differentiate it? I think if we want to do go down that path, <coughs> what we have to do is say, okay, we've got clean heat in the winter. We want let's let's get clean heat because they're not located or whichever it is not like not not uh, got to deal with our coa. So let's get them to say we will not buy fracked gas, mm -hmm. and then we'll all migrate. But until then, until we get that undertaking from one of the gas companies, I don't think it. I don't think it's going to work. Um, uh, but I, I, my understanding is the lint is a little bit worse because it's it's yeah. already tied in with the you know the fracking interests. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I mean they they've done that in the in the um, New South Wales. You know people's changed companies, but it's it's sort of a bit more clear cut. With like you say, there's one pipe, so how do you know? Um, but I did say. Look, you're saying that now. If I find out you're doing frack gas. Gas yeah, yeah, from my house. yeah. But it, I mean, it is problematic. But if we can, if but to do a corporate campaign, we really need to force the issue and get the commitment before we tell people to move over. Um, hello, yes. Um, I think last year, um, Clean Heat signed a three or thirty million dollar contract with a fracking get company. Okay. Yeah, that good on you for knowing that. Well, wow. how did you know that? Do you uh, studying it at that school or just yeah? Okay, yeah, um, yeah. Well, exactly. So that that would that be our color or AWE? Do you remember? Uh, no, it was ACE. That's some homework for you, Alex. Next time you come, you can inform us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So yeah, so so that's an example of yeah. Maybe they're the. And yeah. when we rung up the other the first. Three or four people we talked to said, "Oh no, no, no! Our gas isn't um, frac gas." And then um, the fifth person we spoke to said, "Yes, it is frac gas." Mm -hmm. so yeah, or it's going all to these be. Lies. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they're I think they're probably <laughs> high. All I care about is money, 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 not people. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. Same school. Okay. <laughs> Smart kid. I think we need you at our next round. <laughs> As, a As a speaker. At, at, a, at our last movie night, I asked the audience who knows what fracking is, and Alex was sitting over here and put his hand up and he told us all about it. Right, so, okay. Yes. You've got very intelligent parents who are very well informed. Right. Yeah, it's your future and it's your water. So, yeah. No, it's not yeah. Any other questions? Well, please, um, yes, yeah, stay in touch, guys. Um, if anybody wants to come tomorrow to the metro, oh, sorry. Yep. Um, you know how there's the our gas, and they just have to burn it. The methane. Yeah. The flaring. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's not really the right way to dispose of it. I think they should be um, putting it in canisters and selling it because I mean. If they're going to lie about it not being frack gas, just because they want some extra money, I think they should be using that for more extra money. Mm. Um, I mean, sometimes it's too dirty. Yeah. Like they're burning off because they go down in and it's all pretext <coughs> chemicals, all really yeah. grimy kind of stuff. They've got to burn that, the most toxic bits off first. 
mm. uh, or they're also experimenting. Like what the big shot that we had, in, if you remember, there's a big orange flame, mm. um, a low ground one, yeah. that was taken in the Midwest. Oh. Um, that was when they're test fracking. So they're not set up to collect this gas, they're set up to burn. But we don't, as long, at least they're burning it, not just letting it into the atmosphere. So that's one thing, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah, I think you're right. We, we should value this gas if it's yeah. going to come out. Um, yeah, we should be putting a, um, a price on it and, and making sure that they don't. And um, the, I mean, uh, the, the um, Cal Energy said they wouldn't be fracking, um, they wouldn't be burning off their test gas, but they did. I mean, I did another little film that's on um, Facebook um, from uh, one of the fireys who said, you know, he was seeing the flame. They were seeing this flame at night and they kept on having to get up at two in the morning to go and investigate whether there was a fire and it was just Cal Energy burning their test mm -hmm. fracking. You know what they should do with the um, off gas or the methane? They should probably use it to generate electricity because... Mm. They oh, have that's, that's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if we left it there, I think it might be a better idea and, you know, use the sun and the wind. But, yeah, I think if they are going to take it. So in Queensland, what they did was they got, so got too much out of the ground too quick So they and the, and the price fell, so they burnt all this gas. They were flaring at Gladstone, <laughs> massive flares, and that was such a waste because those people who were, their farms had been, you know, popped, and the gas was just being burnt. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dumping milk away. Can we please thank Jane? <laughs>